Hello and welcome back to FTL Faster Than Light. On the last run, spoilers, we played as the Federation Cruiser, the Osprey. And we managed to complete two of the three achievements to unlock the B-type layout of this ship. We also managed to defeat the Rebel flagship, so we did unlock the Zoltan Cruiser. Zoltan Cruiser is quite strong. With three Zoltan crew, that's a, a bonus three power on top of whatever reactor power we start with, which will barely be enough to actually power everything on this ship. But we do start with a halberd beam, which is a very nice beam weapon. It pierces through one bar of shields. And we also start with a Lido missile launcher, which is going to be used to bring down enemy shields if they have more than two shields. Hopefully I will save missiles for quite some time. Uh, but if I have to use the missile launcher, I have to use it. We also have a Zoltan shield, which is a impenetrable shield. It blocks lasers, beams, bombs, missiles. Uh, the enemy cannot mind control you. They cannot hack you. They cannot, cannot teleport aboard your ship while your Zoltan shield is active. But this shield only has five bars of protection. And as soon as it's gone, it's gone for the remainder of the encounter you are on. It will recharge as soon as you FTL jump away. We have some achievements. Destroy a ship before it gets through the Zoltan shield. That should be pretty easy to do. This, sh this should be an automatic achievement, basically. It should be a gimme. Giving her all she's got, Captain, with the Zoltan Cruiser, have 29 power. That's difficult to get, but if you have a really, really good run with this ship, then you should be able to get it, because all this means is that you upgrade your ship completely. There's always engine power you can dump power into if you need it. Manpower, get to Sector 5 without upgrading your reactor in the Zoltan Cruiser. So similarly to the Federation ship, where you can't upgrade your weapon system, this one, you can't upgrade your reactor, which is incredibly hard. I might not even try to get manpower because this is a ridiculously difficult achievement to get. We can't upgrade systems. We can upgrade shields, but we can't upgrade the reactor to power the shields. We have to divert power from something else like engines and oxygen or something like that. So it's going to be a very difficult achievement to get. Maybe I'll try and go for it, but this is really an achievement where you want to upgrade your shields and your engines and then just beeline the fifth sector because you can beeline the fifth, fifth sector rather easily and then you get the achievement and then you don't have to do the achievement again. So this might be something where it's kind of a one off run of FTL that you just get to sector five with the ship. Don't upgrade anything. You just run and hope that you manage to make it work. We're going to play as the Zoltan Cruiser, and we are going to start this run. Now, we do have Turing, Nellis, and Ohm. We have barely enough power to keep the Halberd Beam online. We can't actually have the Lido Missile online at the same time. We're going to have to upgrade our weapon system one more time before we can have that online. And for the first sector, it's not going to be that much of, a, of an issue, but... As soon as we get to the second and third sectors especially, we want to have this Lido online so that we can take down the enemy shields and then hit them with the Halberd Beam while their shields are par partially down. We don't want to give them a chance to repair. And otherwise, I think we just go. Going to the store immediately is worthless because we have literally zero scraps. So we're just going to jump in the other direction instead and we get a pirate. Pirate should be pretty easy to take down. They do have a single laser and a beam. Now, they cannot penetrate my shields, obviously, because we have the Zoltan shields. So we're just going to focus fire on drones, oxygen, engines, weapons, and the empty room. And turn auto fire on, why not? And two shots from this beam will kill them. In fact, I'm, I probably could have killed them had I started in the shield room. Because what would have happened is the beam would have taken down the shields partially and then it would have continued scraping across the enemy hull doing significant damage. So I should have, and I should do this in the future, is I should start the beam on the shield room always, if you can, if you can. We managed to make it work. We got 28 scrap out of that, which is pretty nice. Can't upgrade the med bay. It's pretty much always what I love upgrading first. So if I can, I will hold off and upgrade the med bay as soon as possible. We will investigate, invite him to join our crew, we get Charlie, and that's great. He is a good engines man, so he's going to go on the engines, and Nellis is going to go on the shield room instead. 
So a couple of things that I should probably note here is that um, it might actually be more beneficial for us to put Charlie on the piloting system and Turing on the engine system. No one has any skill levels yet, so we're fine moving people around. And the reason why I say this... Uh, ohm, yeah, you're on the uh, weapon system. The reason why I say this is because we get one free power from doing this. The piloting room with the Zoltan doesn't make a lot of sense because the Zoltan gives, here, I'll just I'll just show you here, crew, provides power to occupied system in the top right there. Zoltans give you free power if they're in a room that can be powered. The piloting system cannot be powered. So having a Zoltan crew member in that room gives you no benefit. It's much better if you can put the Zoltan in a room that can be powered, such as the engine room, the, sh the uh, weapons room, and the shield room. So now we have three power from these three Zoltan. If I move them out into this empty room, all of a sudden our power is significantly decreased. Another interesting thing to note about the Zoltans, and I might as well get this out of the way now, is that you'll notice in the bottom left here, in the uh, where the shield system is powered, there is two yellow, uh, two yellow bars here. That means that, that is, there's a Zoltan in the room. Interest interestingly enough, Ion weapons cannot disable Zoltan power, so if my shields were to get pelted with Ion weapons, by having two Zoltans in the room, my shields would not go down. They would at the very least have one bar of power in them. So if you're running up against a ship that has a lot of Ion damage output, maybe you, even if you run into a system that has a Pulsar, if you put your Zoltan crew member in the shield room, your shields will stay online. So I might try that in the future. That is a friend who is talking to me about some Rocket League later. I just got to mute that. There we go. Okay, so 28 scrap. We managed to get another crew member. That is great. We're going to jump into the nebula and see what we get. All right, it, it is a, a plasma storm. So we do have a reduced amount of power. However, because we have Zoltan crew members, we're not as affected by the power shortage. In fact, the only thing that went offline is the oxygen system. That's pretty good. We can use this to our advantage and try to go onto the enemy ship with our halberd beam. We can keep the shields online. We can keep the oxygen online. We can keep the, uh, the engines online. There's no point really in keeping the shields online right now, though, because we have the super shield, so I am going to divert power into the oxygen system just to keep it online. When our super shields go down, then I can switch power into the shield system. But we're getting a ton of dodges here. Holy crap. Turing and Charlie have already dodged four shots in a couple of minutes, or a couple of volleys here, which is pretty good. Three fuel, eight scrap, two missiles is not very good, so we will not accept surrender, and we will try to go out killing these guys here. All right, now I kind of need to worry about getting these shields online. However, they're actually boarding us too. I, they're in the sensors room, which actually really sucks because they're going, going to be able to take it offline. Um, but hopefully we can kill them before they get a shot off because if we do, then we can um, avoid taking damage here. Good, good, good. We do have to worry about the invaders, so what I'm going to do is put everyone into the med bay, even the Zoltans that we have here, and I'm going to open all doors except leading into the med bay, and this should force them to come attack us, and we will get some extra weapons training because of it. Nope, they already died. I was not expecting them to die from oxygen deprivation, but hey, it works. Let's get everyone back into the rooms that they belong in. Okay, I want the weapons online. Shields, we can power up the shields as soon as we jump. Okay, that was a pretty decent encounter. We will visit the next beacon. And good, it is combat. I like getting into combat when I uh, in these nebulas when I have the Zoltan ship, because if we run into a plasma storm, we still have a ton of power and a ton of shields, so... Now this is a problem. The enemy combat drone will eat up our super shield. Hopefully we will be able to uh, block one of the missile shots when they come in. 
looks like we will be able to have enough shields to block it, but it did miss, which is fine. The We will not have shields to block the next missile, but we did manage to, to take their missile launcher offline. Their drone is still online, but it can't really hurt us all that much. So I'm just going to continue firing on their ship here. Their drone doesn't matter because their super shields are offline, and it's only a beam drone. If I can take down their shields, though, I should be able to kill them in one volley here. Nah, I guess one more. But this was a an easy encounter. Even if the missile had hit our... It would have hit our super shields, and we wouldn't have taken any hull damage. Halberd Beam takes a long time to charge. Ohm is going to take a long time to get his weapon upgrades because of the length of time it's taking us to get shots off. Now we do have the second bar of shields, which is nice. I love having a second, not a second bar of shields, a second level med bay, which is nice. I love having the second level med bay. It protects you against so much bullshit in this game. So many beacons that just kill your crew members. Now, doesn't matter. We will definitely attack the slavers. This should be a pretty easy ship for the reasons I've already listed. They only have one laser, which shoots very infrequently. They have one missile launcher. Both of their weapons are gonna bounce off of our super shields, including the missile. So here it comes. It did two damage, but we will be able to block the next missile shot that they shoot anyways. So it doesn't matter that they even have that missile. Like it can't do any damage to us as long as our super shields are online. Now our super shields will go down from this laser shot if it hits. So now if they shot the missile, we would be in a bit of a problem, but they didn't shoot the missile. I will accept a crew member having extra... They tried to board us at the last minute there. Having extra crew members is awesome. And I will have a rock man, and I will put him on the door system. <sighs> I kind of actually want him on the, uh, the piloting system. Do I want him on the piloting system? Let's just leave him on the door system. Charlie the human can be on the piloting system. We do need at least one human on this crew, so why not have Charlie do it? I would like to visit the distress beacon because it's a guaranteed thing. You know, it's not gonna be a beacon that doesn't have anything in it, but we can't escape this section of the map, so we are gonna to have to ignore it, head north. North, not really a proper direction. We're talking about space, but whatever. A simple rebel ship that has one laser and one beam. This should be a very, very easy encounter. We should just be able to kind of stand here, let them take shots at us. Our super shields will block everything. And even if we didn't have the super shields, it would be hard for them to do damage to us unless they fired their weapons at the exact same time, but they didn't. And they don't even don't even have the opportunity opportunity to do so now because they are heavily, heavily wounded. That's why you gotta start your beams on the shield room because it took the shields offline and then we did two damage to the weapons room taking both of their weapons offline this is an offer i cannot refuse the burst laser mark ii is amazing it's one of the best weapons in the game and getting it means that we can fire the burst laser take down the enemy ship shields and then follow it up with a halberd beam that does a lot of damage we are set for weapons for at least through sector four or five. That This is amazing, amazing pickup to get here. We will never surrender our crew to slavers. That much should be obvious. We will continue to do the same strategy we've been doing, shields, weapons, in that order so that we can hopefully do two damage to the weapon system. If we only hit once, we they might still have their flak cannon online, but if I hit for two points of damage on the weapon systems, it will take the flak cannon offline. Good. Because uh, the laser, this little laser here, is only a one power laser. So if I take two power away from their weapons by de dealing two damage to it, they have to take the flat cannon offline. So this is good. Ooh, and we managed to hit with the halberd beam while the shields were still down and they are dead. Excellent. 22 scrap. We now have 49. I would like to get sensors. Sensors are pretty good to pick up. Maybe even third level sensors. I keep running into situations where having third level sensors would be really good for me, but I never have third level sensors. A slug ship next to a sun should be pretty easy. Double shot laser and single beam. Double shot laser means that if our, if our super shields go down, they will be able to do damage to us, but 
if we hit them with anything here, we should be fine because their lasers are gonna take a long time to take down our super shields. Yeah, we still have two bars of super shields and it's gonna take them a while to charge their weapons. We should be fine here, hopefully one miss. Good, one miss means that even their next laser shot can't hurt us, unless the Pulsar brings our super shields offline, which it probably will now that I think about it. We will not accept surrender. We will take their weapons offline and we have a bit of a fire problem aboard our ship. All right, piloting system first, Rockman. Take this fire out. Rockman can go put out the fire in the sensor's room because he is immune to fire damage. Fire destroyed their ship, I am pretty sure about that. Fire is still contained, which is good. And we will jump, but I, I do want to give my Rockman a minute to potentially put out this fire. So we're just gonna hold off here for a second. Solar flare imminent, we will jump. And looking at this beacon layout, I'm actually really happy with what we've got going on here. We should be able to pick up a couple of extra beacons here. I will get some fuel for three missiles. I'm probably not gonna be using the, the Lido missile launcher all that much, but we're in a good position here. We can go to the exit, a beacon, a beacon, a beacon, and then kind of backtrack to the exit, or maybe even go up here around and backtrack to the exit. Either way, we're gonna be able to get in a couple of extra beacons on this first sector, which is great for us because I've, you know, I've said this in the past, a good indicator of your success in FTL is how many beacons of value you can visit just flat out the number of them. And if we can visit two or three extra beacons on this first sector, we are in a good position. So everyone is healed up and ready to go. Five, six, seven, 85, 85 scrap for the burst laser two online at the same time as the halberd beam. That is a very useful thing to get. So I think I will try to aim for getting the burst laser online. Hull Repair Defense Drone is very, 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 very nice. Unfortunately, we do not have the scrap for it. This is interesting, battery backup, 35 scrap. We can activate it if we dump another 50 scrap into it to get four bonus power. Maybe we could do the, uh, the achievement that is don't upgrade your reactor system right now because the weapons we have plus the super shield might be enough to carry us for the rest of the uh, the first five sectors here. Ah, shit, man. Why don't we give it a shot and see what happens? Sell the Lido. We don't need it. Burst laser halberd beam. Yeah, it's a, it's a terrible missile launcher. So we're going to sell that. Can't buy anything else. Okay, so now we have bonus power. We can activate this and get two bonus power right now. And if I spend 50 more scrap, I can upgrade it to give me another two bonus power for a total of four. Asteroid field. Asteroid field is a bit annoying because the asteroids will take down our super shields. The good thing about this though is that the halberd beam will totally wreck this enemy ship if I fire it when their shields are offline. So I'm gonna hold off on shooting it right now. Double laser shot coming in, we can't dodge it. Our shields are completely offline. So this is a situation where we need to get those shields online ASAP. Okay, hold off on a second. Come on, asteroid hit him. Taking some damage here, but we're good. Fuck, I gotta... I gotta wait a sec. Ah, I gotta fire. Okay, good. We took their weapons offline and killed them. We did take a little bit of damage there. That's fine. We can get ourselves healed up and repaired. Take the weapons offline for now so that we don't lose power as we move people around. We gotta get this med bay repaired ASAP so that we can heal up. Alright, Rockman can stay in there and repair it while... The oxygen comes back online, piloting system comes back online. We took a, we took like five points of damage there. That's not too bad. A bit dangerous because our shields did go offline, but we can we can focus on getting better shields in the future. Asteroid fields are really the hard counter to uh, Zoltan's shields because the asteroids just eat up the Zoltan shield's power. So maybe even getting something like a long-range scanners might be pretty nice in the future. 
I do think I can visit two beacons, so I will visit two beacons. Probably, uh, probably up and then down just to make sure that we can visit the exit if we have to. There's no way we're getting three beacons in, so let's not even try. Uh, shields, drones, weapons. Might as well take the weapons offline if we can. One shot will take down one weapon, and the other weapon will not be able to damage us no matter how many times they shoot it. So why don't we take their weapons offline if we can? Good, and we hit, we hit their shields for two? No, we hit their shields for one, but it did take the shields offline, so we hit for two on the other three rooms. They're going to try to escape, but they have no one in the piloting room right now. Enemy FTL is delayed. They are focusing on repairing their ship instead of fleeing. I would probably focus on fleeing at this point, but hey, to each of their own. Achievement unlocked, shields holding. There we go. I thought we had that already, like the, the condition already in a previous encounter, but I guess not. But there we go. We have killed an enemy while leaving our super shields online. One more beacon that we can go to before we visit the exit. It's 85 for the double weapon setup that we have, so we do have to wait a little bit longer. There's nothing here, so we're not going to get it at all. What do we do in that? What do we do then? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I guess we could go for extra engine power and then just try to jump. Just try to FTL jump as soon as possible. It's not a lot of scrap for the extra power capacity. And I can't always activate the battery backup to dump some power into the engine system. So why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Why don't we focus on... Why don't we focus on engine power and we'll just jump out of this exit beacon as soon as we can. It's not a waste of scrap, but it's an unfortunate spending of scrap. Unfortunately, it means that we do have to use the burst laser because they only, uh, well, they have double bars of shields and the halberd beam. halberd beam cannot penetrate it. But we do have the battery backup. No reason to have the shields, our shields online right now because they can't penetrate our Zoltan shields yet. So let's just get the FTL drive charging. That, now this is a double shot heavy laser, so it does two damage to the shields when it hits. It did miss though, so unfortunately we do have to kind of put the uh, shields online before they shoot next. So we're going to wait a second. Get the power online. Our shots are just missing completely. Here comes ASB. If it hits, it hits, it hits. But it hit in an empty room for three, so that's not too bad. All right, we're just going to jump out. We did no damage to their ship, which is fine, I guess. Ah, this sucks. I So many green sectors, and I really don't like green sectors. I guess what we're going to do is go up, because we have three red sectors. If I go down, I can only have the option of going to two red sectors. It means that I can skip a nebula, but I don't mind the nebula that much if it means I can go to a red sector instead. So we are going to go to the NG-controlled sector, and I wish I didn't have to, but I have to. Let's get the, uh, the breach sealed up, get power redistributed slightly, get the halberd beam back online, and we need to get 85 scraps so that we can get the burst laser online at the same time. Hopefully we don't run into too many ships that have two bars of shields, or else we have to switch to the burst laser. But even if we have to switch to the burst laser, hopefully we will be fine for a few beacons until we get the scrap necessary. Get everything online. Yeah, okay. And let's jump. Doesn't matter which direction we go into because there is no store, no distress beacon, there is a flak gun, holy crap, that is amazing. Flak gun, burst laser, halberd beam is a great, great combination of weapons to have. I am very, very happy with what we've got going on here right now. I... <sighs> it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate that one of the... one of the achievements is get to sector five without upgrading the reactor because we have so many good things that pump reactor power into. We did get the uh, the sector scans though, which is quite nice because we can plan out our run, go to beacon, beacon, distress, 
and then head around a little bit. There's a couple of distress beacons we could go to. Ah. Yes, we will attack the ship. You overhear Mantis Com chatter. Negative, I have killed more humans. You gulp noticeably, but luckily they don't see you yet. I will attack them, heck yeah. They have an ion weapon and a beam. They can't penetrate our shields. So we're just going to go ham on their shields plus weapon system. The, the ion damage is uh, multiplied because it is hitting our super shield. It does two damage to the super shield instead of the normal one that that weapon does. A little bit annoying, but uh, ion weapons are kind of just a good counter to Zoltan energy shields. The burst laser mark two is really good against Zoltan energy shields because it does a, a shot that normally does one ion damage, does two damage against the shields, and it shoots every four seconds, which is kind of kind of ridiculous. There's another ship, and we will approach it and see if there's anything to kill. Just another another mantis ship that has only a single weapon okay in fact we might even be able to kill the crew here as odd as that sounds they only have one laser the one laser cannot damage our super shields right so here's what I'm thinking completely disable our dodge chance they have two mantises and a NG we have a burst laser we wait for them to board us and we attack the med bay as they try to heal, which should theoretically kill them. Well, not kill them, but it will do damage to them. Substantial damage, hopefully. So they're going to board us now. One Mantis is in the... the backup battery room, and we are going to send the Rockman plus the human in there to attack him. Rockman will be able to absorb a lot of damage, and then as soon as they... As soon as he beams back, we will attack the med bay and hopefully kill him. Actually, we just killed him right there. Perfect. Now, will they try to board us again? It does not look like they will try to board us again. That makes this plan a little, little bit harder to, uh, to actually fulfill here. You stay there for a second. I, I, gotta, I gotta figure this out. How are we gonna do this? I guess we just attack the mantis first. Nope, all right, we're just gonna miss. Maybe we can't, maybe we need some sort of a boarding drone, a, a teleport or something that allows us to get on board the enemy ship because as is, we're gonna have to hit them a lot of times to kill their crew. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to kill their crew. It was it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot for this you know few seconds I tried. Let's make sure that the shields don't take the weapon system offline. Oops, I accidentally took my shields offline, which was dumb. We're just going to kill him. We're going to kill him. Yeah, it's not looking good for you guys. I mean, it was it was valiant of you to try to send over a single mantis to attack me, but I was kind of hoping you would send two over, because then I would be able to kill the crew. But since you have two crew members alive and I only have the one gun that I can put active at any moment, it doesn't really work out for me all that well. All right, we can jump around a little bit more. I'll, I'll probably jump here, distress, and ignore the store because if I upgrade the weapon system once, I can actually get the flak burst laser online at the same time. And that seems a pretty good combination for me because it means that I can actually start... I can actually start... Nice, free drone schematic. I can actually start uh, killing enemy ships more easily now and faster and I can actually use two guns, so it seems pretty good. So, wait for our weapons to charge. I don't see a need, uh, real need to use the backup battery, but I will, just to give us some extra dodge chance so that we can get our skills trained up a little bit faster. Flak burst. Their weapons are destroyed. It's a little bit more focused damage than using the halberd beam, but it, it works. In this situation, I guess I could have just switched over to using the halberd beam because they can't really do damage to us. Their missile, you know, it's going to hit our super shield, whatever. But yeah, this is, this is pretty good. Pretty good situation we got here. The next 
Uh, I can't give you anything because I don't have 40 scrap. Otherwise I would, and I think they give you the NG Medibot Dispersal Medbay upgrade, which is or Augmentation, which is pretty good, but I don't have the scrap, so I can't give them anything. I think if you give them 25, they just leave, and they're like, hey, thanks. Maybe they do give you something, but it's well, almost never... I'm not going to say almost never. For me, I don't think it's worthwhile right now. 38 scrap. Can't get another weapon upgrade. Can't get the next level of the reactor upgrade. What I can do, though, is get sensors. I will get sensors. I will get a second level of sensors just so that I can kind of see what's happening a little bit more easily. And I will jump up towards this store. Maybe I should buy some fuel. We will search and we find an abandoned pirate ship for 12 scrap. Kind of, kind of sucky, but what you gonna do? Because we picked up fuel, I'm gonna skip this, skip the store. I only have 25 scrap. I can buy fuel here, so I will. Now we have plenty of fuel. Jump around a little bit more, a couple of beacons with hopefully combat. Combat drone, bomb laser. I'm going to keep using the flat cannon burst laser. It fires faster than the halberd beam, and because they have a combat drone, I want to try to take down the uh, their drone as soon as possible. There we go. Their bomb is offline, their drone is offline. It's pretty good. Focus fire on their weapons and engines probably so that they can't escape quite so easily they have to get stuff repaired surprise they haven't gotten their bomb online but i guess maybe it is a bomb that takes two power instead of just one there we go pretty easy encounter there can visit a few more beacons before we have to get to the exit so let's one two three four we'll jump to this beacon and then we can decide what we want to do i guess yeah. I will accept your one fuel to uh, lead you somewhere. And I... I think I can't get two beacons. It's gonna be there, and then it's gonna be... There, yeah, I can't... I don't think I can get two beacons, so let's go to the exit without having to fight the rebels. Aha! Improved sensors. So we find a... we find some cargo, we find some wreckage, and we are going to use our, our sensors to scan the wreckage, and we find stuff. Good. The, uh, the big thing there is that we don't get into combat, we don't fall into a trap. Board the station and look for survivors. Yes, because we have a second level med bay, and when we board the station, we are not going to lose a crew member if we would lose a crew member. Ah, this is good. Zoltan Homeworlds. I will go to the Zoltan Homeworlds. It means we will have to fight Zoltan ships, but we have a flak gun burst laser combo, which is not the best for taking down Zoltan super shields, but it's probably better than what the Zoltan have. Hopefully, anyways. Missile launcher plus a laser. Not a good combo for you to have, my friend. Should be pretty easy encounter. This is a hull laser, so it is only going to do one damage to the energy shield when it hits, and the missile is going to, going to do one or two damage. Does two damage, but their weapons are now offline. I don't know why they took both of their weapons offline temporarily. Or their laser was online and then it was offline. It was very strange how that worked out. Oh, but then we started a fire on board their ship. Oh, we can kill him. We can kill the crew. All we have to do is nothing. We just, we just wait. We sit here and they are dead. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's, I mean, I can't even fire my weapons because then we would do more damage to them. Eventually the fire will spread to the O2 system. That's why I'm not, I'm not shooting. I'm not doing anything to them right now. I'm just waiting. There it goes, fire spreading. So now they're gonna go, come in here and try to put it out. Zoltan flees. Human is taking some damage though. This is what we want. We want to we want to kind of weaken the crew members. They're putting out fires. Now he's putting out a fire in the O2 room. Oh, that that is that is not a good thing for you, my friend. He's down to 60 health. I feel so bad. I'm just watching them die slowly. 
Oh, he put out the fire. Good job, man. Unfortunately, your ship is still on fire. There's nothing you can do about it. You're going to die as soon as the fire spreads again to uh, the oxygen room. And the reason why I'm, I'm letting the fire kill the crew instead of actually killing the ship right now is that you get more scrap by killing the crew. You can salvage more materials from the ship and you have a chance of getting, or a better chance, I should say, of getting something like a free weapon or a free crew member from the enemy ship. Oh, you just walked through the room with the fire, you idiot. You idiot, I love you. Fire continues to spread slowly. They don't have any door systems, so the door they don't have doors to uh, stop the fire from spreading. Send the Rockman over to the uh, the sensors room because I do believe they have a double layer or a, a double powered O2 system. I can't tell. I can only see their weapon charge level at three. Yeah. But yeah, they definitely only have a... Or they definitely have a double-powered oxygen system because they still had oxygen in their weapons room, even though if four fires had been in there for quite some time. Human in the engines room doesn't know what he's trying to do. His friend is dead, putting out a fire in the shield room. Oh, you are not looking good for you, my friend. Let's put you out of your misery. There we go. 22 scrap and nothing else but... I think we got more scrap than we would have, and we had a chance at getting a weapon or a crew member, whatever. Get 30 scrap from delivering these people off, which is pretty nice. Now, what do we upgrade? I think upgrading the backup battery is the way to go. We might even be able to get that achievement out of the way right now, because we have four power from the backup battery we can just use whenever we want. That's not bad. Plus the Zoltan shield. Oh, freaking asteroid field. Oh, this ship is actually kind of dangerous. The ion weapon does double damage against our shields, and their missile launcher is going to do damage to us if it doesn't hit our shield. So this should do two damage when it hits. It missed, though, which is amazing. Might as well fire. Get as many shots off as we can. Their shields are offline, so now we just now we just need to hit them with. They are firing a missile at us. There's no way we can dodge it. We need to take their weapons offline. Good, and we started a fire. They only have a missile launcher, but we don't have any shields right now. Relying on our dodge chance here. Hit our engines. It's not bad. Rock crew member can come in here and start helping us get some repairs done. In fact, turn off the oxygen system to get the uh, engines more power. Ooh, we killed all but one of their crew members. Oh, it's so close. Okay, get the O2 back online. They're they're dead. This should kill them. It missed. That should kill them. There we go. Good, we got some scrap. We didn't take too much damage from that. That could have been much worse. Much worse? Much worse. Don't depower the shield room by walking through it, you idiot! Oh my god. That's the biggest problem with the Zoltan crew members is that when you move them around the ship, they remove power from rooms that they walk out of. And the game is not very good at detecting what you what you really want to have happen. And so you, fi you find yourself in these situations where power is removed from your shields or your weapons when you walk out of the room and as you saw, we took some damage because of that. It's kind of dumb. I could have microed my power a little bit better, I think, to avoid that, but I didn't. And I got stuck with the consequences. Consequences? Consequences. Want to try to visit two more beacons before we... That's a fucking awful trade. Visit a couple more beacons before we go to the store. With 72 scrap, we can buy some fuel, heal, maybe get a augmentation out of it or something. Maybe a weapon. Probably not. Our weapon system is actually looking pretty decent right now. So we're going to wait a second before we activate the backup battery. Get the engines powered up. Might as well put some power into the med bay. Now we get the flak and the burst laser. Their shields are offline. They're super shields. We dodged their laser shots, which is very nice. Good, we dodged the ion shot, so their laser shot will not be able to actually damage us. 
Ooh, the ion bomb did a number on us, on us though, and we are not gonna be able to dodge out of this heavy laser shot, which sucks. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. Oh, kind of knew that was coming. Get as much power into our weapons as possible. Take down their weapon system before they have a chance to fire. Good. The double heavy laser missile or a weapon is just a pain in the ass sometimes to deal with. We don't have the necessary power on our ship to power anything, so we gotta wait for a second. They have a fire in their weapons room. Let's get Nellis healed up a little bit. They can't shoot us at all, so we don't need shields right now. Everyone go back to your rooms. Go back to your rooms. Okay, they're dead. I knew we would have some issues going through the Zoltan sector like this, but we're still doing okay. And we can repair a little bit here. Repairs are cheap, only two scrap for one point. So I don't mind spending a little bit of time getting some repairs done. Defense Drone Mark II would be nice. It would make it would shoot down missiles, it would shoot down ion weapons, it would have a, a difficult time shooting down lasers, but could also just pick up another flak gun, which actually I kind of want to do. Another pike beam would be nice too, but another flak gun, just so that we can shoot two flaks to take down the enemy shields completely and then toss in a halberd beam or burst laser on top of it. If I buy the flak though, we can't keep the halberd beam. We could use flak, flak, burst laser, but then we wouldn't have enough power for the halberd beam. So I might have to sell it. Sells for 32, we're gonna sell that. We're going to, we're gonna heal up a little bit. Let's heal up to green. Don't need to buy fuel, we got a ton of fuel. Could buy a crew member. A slug, a Zoltan, an NG. NG might be kind of nice to get some repairs and some uh, bonus options in the the events that we have. Ah, da, da, da. It's an interesting, interesting decision here. Mind control would be pretty nice as well. Do I want to focus on another system though when I'm trying to get to Sector 5 without using extra reactor power? Probably not. So what we could do is kind of just go as is right now. We've got a pretty good setup. And, oh, but the flat gun is so good. <sighs> the flat gun is so good. I, I'm, I'm sorry for taking time. I'm, I'm just, I'm debating it in my head. What do I do? What's the best option for me right now? It's gonna take 50 scrap to get the shields online. Halberd Beam doesn't miss, but the Flak is three shots for only two power, and then we can have another two power weapon in the future. Why don't we, why don't, why don't we try it? Sell the Halberd Beam, pick up the, where is it? Not ship, store. Pick up the Flak gun. We'll have two Flak guns plus a burst laser, and in the future we can pick up another gun to round us out. Okay. We still have enough power that we can upgrade the shield system a little bit. I do like the idea of doing that. Even though we don't have the power technically to put into the shield system right now, what we can do is we can turn on the backup battery before the enemy gets their shots off, dump power into the shield system that way. Rebel ship approaches cautious cautiously. Personally, says the captain, I'd have stuck with the Federation, but I'm a soldier, sir, and I'm no use without a war to fight. Raise your shields. It just sounds like a jerk. They do have a anti-personnel drone. I don't have any way of actually getting on board the enemy ship, so it doesn't matter. Do want to power up our engines when they take a shot, so we will do that. There's actually no reason to turn on the, uh, the second shields, though, because they only have a single shot laser. Take their missile offline, though, is a very good thing for me, because it means that their missile can't and the, their laser, in fact, can't take down my super shield. So it, it really just buys us a ton of time to do this fight. 
Take their drone offline, take their O2 system offline. They're gonna get their weapons powered up a little bit, but I can toss in a flak gun probably. Then hit their shields. They should kill them. Good, and Ohm did finally upgrade to level, well, to his next level weapon skill. So now he has a 15 instead of 10% faster weapon recharge. Probably Nebula, Nebula, Beacon, Nebula, 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 Exit, or something to that effect. So let's do it. I don't mind Nebulas because even if we lose power, we have the backup battery, we have Zoltan crew members, we have a ton. Yeah, I'll take the fuels. Yeah, if we, if we destroy the ship, we don't get nearly as enough reward out of it, but I don't think there's any way we can do this without destroying the ship. So let's get the burst laser online, get the engines powered up. We don't need the shields right now. I don't even know where the crew is, so I'd have to board them or mind control them, but I can't mind control without a, a slug, so there's really no way that we can actually get the fuel. We can almost completely take their weapons offline though, which is nice. I will have to do this to get everything powered. Basically what I did was I made sure these temporary power bars were not in the weapons so that when the uh, extra power gets offline, we don't lose our weapon charges. Our weapons can still fire. I don't mind if the oxygen goes offline temporarily or our dodge chance gets lowered because we are winning this fight. Hit their oxygen system, and they're dead. Easy fight, we didn't get very much fuel out of it. But whatever. Now we can just jump immediately out of this beacon. Nothing, I don't think, yeah. Unfortunate, but that happens sometimes. Gotta put power back in the O2 system. Ah, this is interesting, a pulsar dangerous because it will completely ionize our weapons, but we do have a Zoltan shield and that will block the first bit of pulsar damage, I guess it comes in. Get the shields double charged, get their weapons offline and they will be just sitting ducks. There we go. We did not get ionized at all because of our super shield. In fact, we still have a super shield. They, however, are completely ionized. Trying to escape, can't escape, offering us a little bit of fuel. Our shields, our super shields are now offline, so we will get ionized in the next wave. But they're dead. And in fact, we should be able to get out of this beacon before we have to worry about the next charge on that pulsar coming in. I will definitely attack the ship, why not? They've actually got a lot of firepower, but we have the super shield. Plus when they fire, I can actually get the backup battery power distributed and try to take down their weapons. Good, we took down the missile launcher plus the single shot laser. Their double shot laser is still online, however, but, oh, their beam is also offline. Oh, that's nice. Good weapons are now completely destroyed. I think I made the right call in selling the beam, but we're not using it right now, so maybe in the future we would have preferred to have the uh, the halberd beam. But we're doing such a good job right now, it's kind of hard to complain about anything. No shield, so I'm just going to fire at will, basically. Our battery backup has gone offline, but the, the fight's already over, so the fact that we lost power there doesn't matter, because we have the advantage. If we didn't have the advantage, if we were the underdogs in that fight, then I would be a little bit worried that the battery backup, you know, depowered. But because we had the upper hand, it didn't matter that we lost power. We can always micromanage our power a little bit. 